Bonjour. So I was scrolling Pinterest for pretty and impractical things, as one does, and I saw these silky dresses that were all the rage recently, still are, I don't know. And some have these so pretty cloud patterns that are so cute. And I was interested in this because I have moved from the city to a house in the mountains, and now I see the sky everywhere. La, la, la. And sometimes it's kind of cloudy. Well, not today, or maybe here. And in this old, not at all empty house, I found a bunch of old curtains. Uh, this is not my cat. So I'm going to make a dreamy dress with this for recycling purposes. And also I want to be a princess. <laughs> a bunch of curtains. They are all very much polyester, but they are all see-through and I have so much of it. I might use maybe four in the house, but the rest I think I can turn into a dress. There are some damaged eyelets and some have lace. Not bad, maybe I can save that. Some are just this uh, industrial crochet thing. I don't think I'm going to use this. I have a lot of those which are a bit more cream, but they are more light. This will be perfect for the skirt. I have an old bed sheet for the mock-up and also maybe the underlayer. And since I want the dress to have several layers, maybe I can use this thing that I cut off from another petticoat. Fabric is prepped and cleaned. Those, those curtains were really dusty. And now I can do some testing with dye. I finally got my hand on this one, which is for a synthetic fabric. I've seen a lot of people using it with uh, a lot of success on wigs, on pieces of plastic. So I'm sure it's gonna work great with the polyester. I mean, I hope. And also for the dress to keep it fluff, I wanted to add some fishing line into the hem of the ruffle, but I don't have fishing line, so I went to the hardware store and I found these, which are rolling lines. I hope it's going to work. I have 30 meters, it should be enough. Okay, so I did some testing. I dyed some samples in a hot pot. This was five minutes, 10 minutes. I also tried on cold with just a few drops and there is a little color. Maybe it will be useful for the ombre. I tried the tie-dye thing and I think it's very cloudy. And these are also tie-dye, but they were maybe one minute in the pot. So I think with all of this, I can make something that looks like the sky. I really like the color here. Maybe I can do a big ombre along the dress. This is very promising. I can do a lot of stuff with this. Let's do some sketching and ask the wise people of Instagram for advice. Good, that's my favorite too. I had made a bodice pattern last year for my Cruella de Ville, but it's not quite right, so I have to make another one. Transferring what I just draped onto paper. Using that to cut a mock-up. Slight adjustments include making it a bit larger because it's a bit too tight, making the back waist higher and adjusting the boobies. I have this piece of neoprene which is a bit damaged but I mean buying bra cups they are very expensive so I think it's a good idea to make your own. Neoprene can be assembled very easily using a zigzag stitch. And now we can use the pattern to cut the bodice, which is two layers of cotton and one layer of chiffon. Chiffon. Assembling all these layers is not too difficult if you have made notches. Never forget notches. I have the two cotton layers of my bodice. And now I need to add some boning, but I don't know where it is. Let's try to find it in a storage. Did not find it. <laughs> but I got this, which is a lot less strong than actual steel boning, but it should be enough for this bodice. Because it is not a corset, I just need a little bit of support for the fabric. For the sleeves, I'm using the pattern from my Sophie dress. I just cut it while adding what I thought was a lot of fabric, but uh, spoiler, it wasn't enough. But I'm Ariel from the future, and this one doesn't know it yet. And with all the essential pieces cut, the rest of the fabric can be made into the skirt. 
There was some intense math to figure out how much ruffle I could afford. I've never done tie-dye, but I recently saw the closet historian make some pretty awesome stuff, so I want to try it. For the clouds, I'm bunching up the fabric into these little bubbles. Try to make more at the bottom, but make them still a bit random. Hopefully this will protect the fabric from the dye and leave a nice white fluffy spot. This is a test, so I'm protecting the rest of the fabric in a plastic bag. Okay, so it's still a bit wet, but the color doesn't change much. So we have, I think it's the perfect amount of blue for the bottom of the dress. The clouds are a bit too round. I want more of the marbling effect that I have on this one. Here is perfect. And I got this with a clothing clip, just So I think for the rest of it, I'm going to do the big cloud and add the little clips. I will have to do the 20 meters of ruffle, then the bodice, and then for the sleeves, I'm not sure, we will see. But it's going great. Okay, so not everything was a success yesterday. Also, what is going on today? Do I have to change the whole dress to grey? I thought I had finished the dyeing process yesterday. It's very light and the clouds are very subtle. But for the second one, the color is a bit too dark. It was a different dye pot, so... but maybe the temperature also was different. So the clouds turned out a little bit too round. It's not bad, but it's a bit too cartoonish, maybe a little bit uh, Castelbajac. It's not super different, but it is a little, so I think I have to fix this, but I don't want to redo all the little balls of plastic, so I will fix it maybe with a paintbrush. We will try that. <laughs> Same for the circle skirt. I'm going to dye it a little bit darker here, but still the clouds are fun, but not what I wanted. For the bodice pieces, this is as dark as I could get with this dye. In the sleeves, I managed a nice ombre. I did some testing with bleach to make the color lighter. It turned the color a bit more purple, which is interesting, but it's not what I want. So no bleach. Wearing all black, so I am stain proof. And now let's paint. Okay, I'm now much more into the watercolor effect than the tie-dye. This is way too much fun. <laughs> culprit. I found this table here, but fortunately we have a second one. Anyways, that's what the sky looks like now, so I guess it's now the right color. Oh! <gasps> Is there rainbows every day here? <laughs> oh. I added my clothing line to the hem. This is the underlayer. The wire is a bit like, ooh, meh, I don't like it. And I just did six meters of this. I have a thinner clothing line, so maybe I can replace it. It doesn't have as much structure as I want, but it's still a lot better than this one. So we'll try that.
We have two big strips for the ruffle at the bottom of the dress, so I'm going to assemble them with a French seam. To continue the hem, the spool of fishing line can be held in a basket with a knitting needle. Then two rows of very long stitches to gather this long ruffle. To attach it to the circle skirt, I divided it into four quarters and gather it to this length. The sewing pins are not holding up on this very slippery material, so I'm using these very handy clips. The cups are attached to the cotton layer, and the boning can be sewn on with a zigzag stitch. I also made a very tight zigzag at the end of the boning so it wouldn't uh, stab me. And to hide the seams of the chiffon, I try to play with ribbons a little. But I'm not happy with any of these options. So I'm pinning everything in place on the mannequin to make sure that there is no puckering of this chiffon. Adding the pieces one by one, I'm trying to make it neat because it's transparent. And now it's five hours of hand sewing. Before closing the lining, I'm just flattening these bones. They are plastic, so heat will work. A little line of stitching just above the limit of the lining, so it doesn't poke out because it is a different color. And I'm still adding a little row of hand stitching into the cups, so the lining just stays flat there. I wasn't careful enough. This bone is a bit too long, so even with my stitching, it's pushing the lining out. Ah, so close. There. Much better. Press it and I can attach the skirt. The zipper is not invisible, but it is the right color, so it will be fine. I really want to finish tonight, so last step, sleeves. Since they are transparent, I'm closing the sleeves with another French seam. It does fit pretty well. Well, there's not a lot to support anyway. So I'm just checking that the elastic is okay. And I can wear it like this. This sleeves are too small. I thought I added enough fabric, but apparently not. Did I make a mock-up for the sleeves? No. Okay, so let's just make the sleeves detachable and I can add some ribbon as straps. Finishing the inside with some hand stitching around the zipper using my overlocker on the waist seam and also the ruffle seams on the two layers of the skirt and sewing the ribbon straps by hand. And with that, we are done! <laughs>